realtors sabotaging a home listing for sex. We have new video. Check this out. Obtained by Inside Edition, capturing lewd acts by two Coldwell banker agents who were supposed to be selling a vacant New Jersey home. They were not. They were doing something else entirely. The homeowners have filed a lawsuit, but is this just the tip of the iceberg? Joining me now, Rogers Healy, owner of Rogers Healy and Associates Real Estate and Healy Relocation. Rogers, thanks for coming on the show. This is a wild story, and I'll tell you what the homeowners had to say about this case. Robert Lindsay, that's a realtor, intentionally listed the house above market market value to avoid realtor traffic in the home while he and Jean Marie Fellon carried on their trysts. Now, you know, I've covered real estate for a long time, and this is the first time I've ever right. heard this kind of story. Uh, is this common? Does this go on all the time? Uh, you know, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, but secondly, no. The, the answer is no. I mean, obviously, we've all got our stories. I've done this for about 12 years, and I've seen, you know, my, my fair share of stories, but this is definitely an extreme situation. And you know, as a realtor, you know, we we abide by a certain code of ethics that this definitely is on the other side of it. So this is not something that we see commonly. We definitely see realtors that probably shouldn't be practicing, but this is something that's an extreme case. And um, this is the first time I've heard of a sex video being taped, um, or or something like this being happening. You know, we were talking about this in the meeting this morning and saying that essentially it's it's rare that you actually trust strangers in your home, right? You normally don't leave your house, right. abandon it entirely, and invite people in that you barely know. But that's exactly what happens when you when you hire a realtor, right? You bring in somebody you don't right. know, and then they have open houses and they invite in even more people. What are the risks to that? Yeah. Well, I think to answer your question about hiring a realtor first, I think now we've gotten so reliant on the internet that hiring a realtor is really like going on a first date with somebody and I think rarely does someone hire a realtor without doing a Google search or getting on Facebook or even checking their Instagram to make sure that you know you at least have somebody in common and you know the the beauty and the agony of, of something like Google is it really tells you everything whether it's true or not so you can probably do your due diligence before picking somebody but, but Rogers, um, uh, is, yeah. is it enough to do a Google search is there any place you can go to find out what kind of track record these realtors have, if, if they're trustworthy, if they've had problems? Yeah. So most major markets across the country, the, the top 50, 100 markets, they're going to have a local board of realtors that you can call and just check on the status of that agent. And if anybody's ever had their license suspended or you know, expelled or withheld, that's obviously a red flag that you want to avoid working with that realtor. So real estate agent and realtor, two very different things. If you're a realtor, you've got a license, you're considered, I right. think, you know, much more above board. But obviously, people out there concerned about the kinds of downsides that could happen. What do you say to people who maybe they say they don't want to open their house to an open house because they're worried something's going to get stolen? Yeah, no, I understand. And especially when you work in the luxury price point like we do here in Dallas, um, you know, you take that risk. And, you know, to kind of be blunt, I tell my agents here in Dallas to, you know, open houses, in my opinion, don't really sell the house that they're holding open. You know, it's really for huh. people looking around for nosy neighbors and um, people are just curious. And, you know, I, I find that most houses sell, you know, by people starting on the Internet. That That is a great insight. I think you're absolutely right. That's exactly what happens. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Any other words of advice to people out there who might be looking for a realtor, an agent, somebody to list their property? Um, yeah. Any other conflicts of interest they should be aware of? You know, I, I would just say trust your gut. And, and when you meet a realtor, obviously it's a job interview for them. And, you know, their number one job is to, is to be up, be present. But make sure they're knowledgeable. Make sure they look you in the eye when they shake your hand. And, you know, if you get a creepy feeling, and unfortunately there's a lot of realtors out there that give you that feeling, you know, stay away from them. And I'd also ask for referrals. And most realtors have been doing it for a while. You know, they're going to have clients that are willing to help you out and, and, you know, help them secure a deal. So trust your gut. That's kind of something that we live our life with, you know, all the way around, especially with picking a realtor. <laughs> I won't forget that story for a long time. That was amazing. Yeah, Rogers, thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for coming on and talking to us about it. Really appreciate it. Thanks Thank you. Me.